I remember the Argonne, 1918. The sounds of that battle still haunt me to this day. Machine gun fire from enemy lines. The sickening sound of a bayonet tearing through human flesh. A soldier next to me firing his sidearm in desperation. All these sounds still echo in my mind, and as conducted by death himself, it all comes together as music. A rhythm of death. A symphony of war. 32 different countries were involved in World War I, which was supposed to be the war to end all wars. Roughly 40 million lives were lost. This included civilian and military personnel. The soldiers of World War I, and really all wars, are put through hell between basic training, the battlefields, and trying to return back to civilian life. But while in the heat of battle, and while the adrenaline is rushing, people tend to see things that can't be determined if real or fake. The first incident that went wild in Mons, Belgium in August 1914 was after the British forces had had been pushing the back on the Germans, and then the Germans had, were finally able to stand their ground and ruthlessly able to push back the British. And while the British were retreating, many accounts came from soldiers who said that angelic-like beings came down from the sky to lead the soldiers back to safety, while other accounts had stated that an entire army of bowmen came down from the sky. And this army was led by a woman dressed in all white while riding a white horse. Some accounts even claimed to have seen Saint Michael the Archangel, the Virgin Mary, and even Jean of Arc. They the story became such an inspiration to the masses, the British, French, and Russian governments had said that any claims of it being false were going to be taken as treason. The newspapers of the countries were put in every paper they could to try and make it sound like God was on the side of the Allies. While on the topic of Mons, the second incident that happened was the Hound of Mons incident. At the beginning of the war, the Hound of Mons was thought to be a dire wolf that was thriving off the corpses in no man's land between the trenches in November 1914, but other people speculated it was a hellhound that was summoned to the battleground to torment the souls on both sides of the war. The theory with the most proof was the theory that Germans were trying to create a super weapon, and what they did is they went through all their asylums to find someone who had hated the British the most, and what they did is they took out his brain and put it in the body of a Sib Siberian wolfhound, and then the Germans had trained it and nursed it back to health and let him loose in the no man's land. The days of nightmare began in November 14, 1914 when Captain E.S. Kiss and four other associates from the London Fuselers went to patrol the no man's land. They never returned. After many days, their cadavers were recovered with teeth marks on their throats. Nights later, a petrifying howl was heard from the darkness. From then on, more and more soldiers would die in the no man's land with the same canine imprints on their throats. Every now and then, a, ho a howl was heard and sentries dreadingly noticed a big gray brute tread the grounds of the no man's land. Days after, the hound disappeared never to be seen again. The last two moments from the First World War are sea-based and both involve U-boats, also known as submarines. The first incident is the U-28 creature. Very little is known about both incidents other than what was recorded in the captain's logs. Sea captains at the time, and still are, known to not to exaggerate at all in their logs, so people believe that these are credible reports. The captain of U-boat 28 Commander Fuhrer George G. Von Frosner described the encounter in the following passage taken from his logbooks. On July 30th, 1915, our U-28 torpedoed the British steamer Iberian, which was carrying a rich cargo across the North Atlantic. The steamer sank so swiftly that its bow stuck, almost, stuck up almost vertically into the air. Moments later, the hull of the Iberian disappeared. The wreckage remained beneath the water for approximately 25 seconds. At a depth that was clearly impossible to assess, when suddenly there was a violent explosion which shot pieces of debris, among them a giant aquatic animal, out of the water to a height of approximately 80 feet. At that moment, I had with me in the conning tower six of my officers of the watch, including the chief engineer, the navigator, and the helmsman. Simultaneously, we drew one another's attention to this wonder of the seas, which was withering and struggling among the debris. We were unable to identify the creature, but all of us agreed that it resembled an aquatic crocodile that was about 60 feet long, with four limbs resembling large webbed feet, a long pointed tail, and a head which also tapered to a point. 
unfortunately, we were not able to take a photograph for the animal sank out of sight after 10 or 15 seconds. The second submarine that is involved is the UB-85. This ship was sunk in the Irish Sea in 1918. British patrol boat Coropsis had fired onto the U-boat and sunk it, but the German crew did not fire back, and they had surrendered themselves to the British. The U-boat captain, a Captain Gunther Kretsch, was questioned, and the reason became both clearer and more bizarre. Allegedly report submarine had surfaced during the night for the purpose of recharging its batteries, during which there had been a violent surge of froth water off the starboard bow. When Kretsch and some crew members had gone to investigate a creature that the captain described as a strange beast had suddenly erupted forth from the cold dark water and began clamoring up the side of the ship, which had caused the whole submarine to start listing to the side. The beast was described as being enormous with a small head with large eyes deeply set in a horned skull and a large mouth with sharp teeth that glinted in the moonlight. This strange monster was then claimed to have reached the forward mount gun and to have begun ferociously attacked it chomping down on the weapon with its formidable jaws and thrashing back and forth. So do you think that any of these cryptid monsters are real or even still alive when they were spotted? Or do you think this was an adrenaline-filled hallucinations? For CVM 320, Jacob Millet. Imagine chaos and good from 